Hello. Today we're going to look at this exciting topic, uh, which is a, a pretty challenging topic in our microstrategy world. A lot of our clients uh, have, uh, have faced this challenge on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, where they have very uh, dynamic and uh, flexible hierarchies, and they don't exactly know uh, what are their options. Uh, and today I'm going to uh, take you through what are the more traditional options that most of the people uh, implement versus uh, some of the different ways of uh, handling those dynamic hierarchies. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, this topic I'll uh, take you through uh, four sections mainly. Uh, I'll uh, kind of talk a little bit about what are the industry needs. Uh, that uh, kind of propelled us to make this uh, a proof of concept and implement this solution. And then we'll go through the hierarchy models, uh, the different kinds uh, that we can handle uh, and uh, do in microstrategy. And then we'll also look at uh, some of the end user use cases. Um, I mean, the, that's the whole purpose of it. We want to see how it looks like uh, when we create the end user uh, content like reporting and dashboards and then we'll uh, go into somewhat of a comparison on on the different methods to get a little bit of an overview of what we are looking at so uh, from the point of view of creating these hierarchies uh, fairly everyone that uses microstrategy are familiar uh, with uh, hierarchies one way or the other. We would have organization hierarchies or product hierarchies or different uh, kinds of hierarchies. A lot of times they are uh, very uh, very linear. Uh, you have this top level category from which you can drill down to uh, a smaller and smaller and finer details of the hierarchy. So for example, uh, the one on this slide is a product hierarchy where we have a super category that goes down to categories, segments, subsegment, and so on. But uh, this is not always the uh, uh, only way hierarchies exist. A lot of times hierarchies have uh, uh, interrelationships between different levels and uh, a lot of times the levels, uh, the number of levels in a hierarchy don't necessarily have to be uh, constant or, or the same. Uh, it can have a lot of uh, dynamic feature to it and that poses a challenge in microstrategy because it's not the tool is not by default uh, designed for that kind of dynamic hierarchies so uh, that is a challenge that we see um, uh, in the industry just the modeling aspect of it the technical detail of it and then uh, in addition to that, um, modeling in traditional ways, there are a lot of maintenance and uh, scalability issues. Uh, traditionally, when we build certain objects, uh, we are always tying it to certain columns in a table and that, that poses a lot of maintenance overhead. So if we look at the first method here uh, documented, it's a very uh, traditional flat hierarchy model where we create a fact table at, a, at the lowest level or at every level if we need aggregates. And then we have dimension tables at each level of the hierarchy. And then we have these uh, set objects, microstrategy objects that tie to each of the hierarchies and they, they are named after, after the logical names of each of the hierarchies. For example, you have in an organization hierarchy, you would have region attribute then district attribute that goes down to location attribute and so on. Uh, that's a very traditional approach, uh, uh, very familiar in the microstrategy world. Everyone uh, uh, pretty much implements hierarchies that way. And method one here uh, is a slightly uh, uh, modified version to method zero. Uh, instead of maintaining uh, those different levels of uh, uh, tables, dimension tables uh, for each levels and everything in, um, in the database, we uh, pretty much maintain one dimension table uh, for all the levels and then kind of create views on the microstrategy side and then maintain this uh, whole uh, defining the objects and relationships between them on the microstrategy side. And then we'll look into uh, the new methods of uh, the recursive way of modeling hierarchies, 
which are which would enable us to kind of not just handle the traditional normal hierarchies that go from top to bottom but also uh, any kind of dynamic hierarchies that change over time or uh, hierarchies that um, that are not not just linear uh, that have interrelationships between the, between the different levels so a uh, little more uh, graphical representation of the traditional model uh, looks like this where the data architecture wise you have all these tables for different dimensions and then each table uh, each dimension is tied to a a fact uh, that is at that aggregate level and then you have microstrategy schema almost identical to that that uh, table structure Compared to that, uh, the other slightly modified traditional version uh, is with a recursive table. So the data architecture kind of changes where we are not maintaining that many tables uh, for all the levels uh, of the dimensions. Uh, but we are maintaining one table with all of this. And then on microstrategy side, we create views with certain kind of filtering condition to, to uh, filter out for each of those levels. Uh, that point onwards, uh, rest of the microstrategy objects are very similar to uh, the previous method, which is the most traditional method. And then compared to these two, uh, in a recursive way of modeling the hierarchies, uh, we are proposing we, we could do it two different ways. Uh, we have implemented this with some of our clients, uh, but uh, the first uh, way to do it is we have, instead of maintaining all these different levels, we do maintain one or two tables for uh, for identifying like the hierarchy levels and then the actual hierarchies and then uh, each of the levels uh, in the hierarchies would all be uh, uh, part of the same table. So we are not exactly maintaining different tables for each levels, but we are, uh, have, we are maintaining it in one table with certain identifiers. And then on the micro strategy side, uh, we define the schema in a parent-child relationship kind of way so that uh, it's much fewer objects uh, that would be uh, that would be defining the whole network of uh, of this hierarchy uh, uh, pretty much by just using the parent-child relationship you could traverse this tree structure uh, in, in based on these relationships here. So the micro strategy schema wise, uh, we would pretty much have the mainly uh, uh, about three uh, attribute objects, uh, parent, child, and then the lowest level, the product. And then a slightly modified version uh, of that uh, is graphical representation wise, it doesn't uh, look any different from the previous method. Uh, we would still have the parent-child relationships, but only thing, only difference between the previous method and this is in the previous method, the parent-child relationships are always from the immediate parent to the immediate child, versus here, uh, in this method, we would have relationships defined between every parent to every child. This enables us to traverse the tree in a much faster manner, uh, in certain use cases that we would need uh, compared to the previous method where in the previous method traversing the tree uh, means you would have to go step by step process. And then uh, these are some of the uh, reporting use cases uh, that we compared for all of these methods. So most of the use cases, the very common uh, reporting use cases that we see on a daily basis can be addressed with all of the methods. Uh, versus uh, there are a particularly uh, few uh, of these use cases that uh, we can see that the traditional method uh, addresses them better uh, versus some other cases the, the recursive hierarchy model addresses it better. So particularly if we look at it, uh, it use case number three with a native drilling. Um, so once we implement this recursive way of uh, modeling the hierarchies, we would not be able to easily use that native drilling feature uh, to traverse the whole tree, mainly because the native drilling uh, assumes that it is a flat hierarchy and then you just traverse the tree step by step. Versus in recursive model, if you would try to use the native drilling, you would probably go just one level down or uh, one immediate level down. 
uh, versus uh, use case number three if we look at it the uh, uh, whole aspect of uh, multiple hierarchies if you have a uh, lot more hierarchies and that are also dynamically changing our traditional method uh, methods don't really address that issue uh, mainly because in our traditional methods if you have uh, multiple hierarchies we would have to create multiple objects and, and uh, an object that identifies these hierarchies and then also if they are of different levels uh, you have the challenge of um, maintaining all the levels and then changing levels over time as you're trying to modify the schema uh, on a on a regular basis it's just a lot of overhead and it's difficult to uh, handle that in the traditional methods uh, versus in recursive modeling uh, they can be easily handled so uh, specifically looking at uh, certain reporting examples uh, we can see here for native drilling uh, when we model it on a uh, model it using our traditional methods you can directly use the feature where you just click on uh, uh, one of the company attributes or uh, elements and then drill down to the category and then click on category to go to subcategory and so on versus in recursive modeling you can go down only one level so from from the parent to the child versus the use case 9 the uh, multiple hierarchies using the recursive hierarchy model you could practically just create a drop down selector in a page by or or anywhere and then you can uh, traverse the tree in a much easier quicker manner so overall, uh, th we do have pros and cons uh, in the traditional methods versus recursive modeling, but some, uh, some of the use cases are handled better uh, in the traditional model. But when we are trying to deal with dynamic hierarchies uh, changing over time and having a, a high number of hierarchies and such, uh, recursive modeling helps a lot. And, and, and these, uh, re uh, these modeling techniques they can also be used together in a single microstrategy project. You can in fact have, have attributes and, and objects defined using the traditional model uh, as well as you can use it use a uh, recursive modeling uh, hierarchy as well. That way you're, you could try and achieve all the, all the requirements you need. Um, but the only thing is uh, you're, you're just adding a lot more objects and uh, a, a lot more maintenance to it. So if your use cases are are spanning across all these different uh, different scenarios, then uh, you're probably better off uh, implementing both the methods. But the bottom line is you don't have to uh, pick and choose only one. You can actually implement both of them and then uh, uh, try to try to get everything that you want. All right. Uh, so I hope this presentation helps you. Uh, yeah, this is a very challenging topic. Um, we do help with implementing this uh, different ways of uh, uh, modeling the hierarchies. And yeah, uh, I hope this presentation helped you and uh, hopefully uh, you will be able to achieve what you're trying to do for your users. And uh, feel free to reach us. Uh, we are SmartBridge. Uh, we uh, uh, do the consulting for BI World. Uh, a lot of our clients are microstrategy uh, clients and uh, yeah, we'll be happy to help you if you need. Thank you.